Right, so these are some of the questions that were asked from polarography in the previous years. And uh, <clears throat> so I'll discuss each and every question and see, I, even I don't like to make presentations. I mean, it's, it's tough to make them and then uh, it does not have that much impact as a whiteboard, but uh, sometimes it's important to make questions on the, on, on the slides. I mean, sometimes it's beneficial for both you and me. So uh, like now over here, we can see all the options and it becomes easier to understand. Okay. Now this question came in December 2016, CSI net, and I'll discuss each and every option as well. And like I told you, most of the most of the uh, questions uh, are asked from this equation itself. This is the Ilkovich Ilko equation, uh, which is ID is the fusion current is equal to 607 N, where N is the number of electrons uh, getting reduced. C is the concentration, right? Then uh, D is the diffusion coefficient, M is the ma ma mass of the mercury that is flowing per uh, second and T is the time of each drop. Okay, so this is the Ilkovic equation which I have already discussed. So the December 2016 question is the correct statement for DC polarography is E half is concentration dependent. E half is the half wave potential and I have told you that the half wave potential is never going to be your concentration is not dependent on the concentration. Uh, it is in fact only dependent or uh, I mean it, it is uh, characteristic of every compound so it is not dependent on the concentration the E half value it depends on the metal or, or whatever uh, uh, analyte we are, we are using right so this is totally incorrect E half is not dependent your ID your diffusion current is actually dependent on the concentration like you can see right then dropping mercury electrode is macro electrode this is also incorrect if you have seen my lectures previously you know that dropping mercury electrode is actually a micro electrode because it is just a single drop. Then limiting current is equal to diffusion current. This is totally wrong because if you see the graph, uh, the graph was something like this, right? Where we had this and then the residual current. So from point this to this is our diffusion current. Okay. And here we have the current C I'll represent it by and this was our uh, applied potential. So I'll represent it by AP. So this was our applied potential and this was the current. So if you see this over here, this 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 whole part was a limiting current uh, and diffusion current is only this much. So you can clearly see that the limiting current is much, much more. And if you want to find out the uh, diffusion current, it is basically limiting current. Uh, I'll represent this by LC minus the residual, residual current. So till this point, we have the residual current. So this portion over here is the residual current. So our diffusion current is basically LC minus residual current. I'll represent by RC. So this is our diffusion current. So the, definitely the limiting current is not equal to the diffusion current. So this is also incorrect. So the correct, correct statement, statement is that a large excess of supporting electrolyte eliminates migrate, migration current. And this is what I told you that we use a large amount of indifferent electrolyte or supporting electrolyte that like they have mentioned to eliminate the migration current because then most of the current that is carried out is, is because of the electrolyte and we only get the diffusion current out of the diffusion of your analyte so that is why when we are using large excess of supporting electrolyte uh, that eliminates the migration current almost totally right and please see my previous videos if you haven't seen them because i've explained each and every concept over there in detail now uh, this question was there in june 2015 another easy one totally dependent on the uh, totally dependent again on this equation now consider the following statements regarding the diffusion current at dropping mercury electrode it does not depend on mercury flow rate this is false why because it does depend on the flow rate of mercury like i have told you over here it depends on the time like you can see there's a t so t is the time taken for each drop to fall so that is why it this statement is incorrect that it does not depend on mercury flow rate it does depend it depends on the drop time yes again this t value is basically your drop time so it does depend on the drop time so b option is totally correct it does depend on the drop time and the third option is it depends on the temperature now this is where some students might mark option number b as the correct answer because they think in the equation there is no term for temperature and they would say it does not depend on temperature so only b is correct but here is where you would go uh, wrong because in, if you have seen my videos, video lectures carefully, I have told you that this 607, this value is actually dependent on temperature. This constant that we have 607 is actually dependent on the temperature. 
so this 607 is there only for a very specific temperature but if you change the temperature this constant which is 607 will change because it does depend on temperature so actually it depends on temperature is in fact correct so the correct answer would have been option number four so be careful of such questions right okay now this question was there in june 2014 and uh, again, uh, this this I've explained in my videos. They have said that gelatin added during the polarographic measurements carried out using dropping mercury electrode does which of the following? So if again, if you have seen elemitting migrating current, that's totally incorrect. This is done by the sub supporting electrolyte. Uh, decreases viscosity of the solution. It does not have anything to do with the viscosity, nor does it have anything to do with the preventing preventing pre uh, preventing the oxidation of mercury. So the correct answer is it reduces the streaming motion of mercury drops. So I had explained this uh, uh, that gelatin. Then we have surfactants like triton, T R I T O N. This I also have explained in my videos. Triton. Then you have uh, organic dyes like methyl red. So these all compounds like triton X, methyl red. Uh, then your methyl cellulose, and all of these compounds uh, they help in. Uh, reducing the streaming motion. What do you mean by streaming motion? Basically, when one mercury drop falls, it tries to uh, have exert some effect on the second mercury drop. So you, you do not generally get a, a uniform size or uniform size of the mercury drop. But for the uh, accurate measurements, you do need a uniform size. So basically, this gelatin helps us in attaining a uniform size. And the mechanism I have explained in my video. So if you haven't seen that, again I'll repeat. Just go and see. In the video now in gate 2017 there was a numerical for two marks uh, based on your polarography and the numerical said that the diffusion limiting current or the diffusion limiting current ID so they said that this diffusion limiting current is equal to the diffusion current so your ID uh, of a dropping mercury electrode for an aqueous magne magnesium solution of concentration C is 300 micro ampere okay so they have given that the cut they have given you the value of current id so they have given you the value of current id and they say if c is increased by 0.1 mole per liter and uh, the value of id increases to 900 micro ampere so the value of c up to two decimal places you have to find out so they have given you the id value of id so if you see this equation they have given you the value of id and they have given you concentration so from this equation we can say that id is directly proportional to the concentration right because they have not mentioned any other thing so we will assume that all the other things are constant uh, because they are only increasing the concentration so id is proportional to concentration so uh, if they have given that id value is 300 so 300 upon and they have given up if we increase the concentration by 0.1 micro mole, mole per liter the id increases to 900 so 900 up, 300 upon 900 is equal to we'll take the initial const concentration as c so initial concentration is c and then they have increased by 0.1 so c by c plus 0.1 we can take so this is the equation we get right 300 upon 900 since id is proportional to c so 300 is given initially for concentration c and then for 900 uh, the value 900 comes for concentration C plus 0.1 because they have increased the uh, increased the uh, concentration by 0.1 over the original concentration. So 300 upon 900 is equal to C upon C plus uh, 0.1. So if you uh, divide this 1 by 3, this becomes 1 by 3, right? So uh, if you if you cross multiply C plus 0.1 is equal to uh, 3C. So you are cross multiplying that is you are multiplying this 3 by C and this C plus 0.1 uh, by this one. So you get C plus 0.1 equal to 3C. So if you solve this C comes out to be equal to 0 point and since you have to find it for up to two decimal places. So 0 0.05 is the answer. So the correct answer that you had to uh, type on the numerical uh, pad was 0 0.05. So these are the some of the questions and like you can see most of the questions it like uh, are, uh, are actually based on your uh, Ilkovic uh, equation, right? And if you have some other questions that you found out from previous year papers, uh, you have, please feel free to request those. And uh, I mean, first try it out yourself because I am sure that they might be very simple. And in case you face some problem, you can just uh, comment down in the comment section, right? So thank you so much.